I'm gonna probably get a lot of hate from these Wall Street bettors, but it is your money. You need a profit take when you think you need a profit take. You don't hold it just because everyone else is. Hey all, Choi Boy here. Welcome to another Sharesies portfolio update for February 2020. You can see that I'm finally monetized, so I'll be having ads coming up, you know, popping up here and there and below, you know, before the video starts. Please look through them. I mean, if you're really busy, you know, you can skip them. But if you want to support the channel, just, yeah. A disclaimer before I start, I'm not a financial advisor. Please take everything I say with a grain of salt. It should be taken as entertainment or you should at least cross check it with your own research and see if I'm talking any crap or not and if I'm not then that's good. If I am just ignore me I don't really mind you know I don't get everything right so just keep that in mind and that's pretty much all and let's get straight into it. So the value how did the value change? The the value is $17,223. Okay, so that's actually a bit lower than what the January one was. The January one was around 17.8. Now it's like 17.2. What happened? The market started to dip a lot in January and it's continuing through February. So there's a bit of up and down. There's a bit of volatility coming up. There's a lot of things happening in the stock market that we don't quite understand. Starting off with the GME stuff, you know, back in January, we just really don't know what the stock market has done and what it's going to do. It's really hard to predict anything. Not that it was easy at the start, but you know, it's even worse now. You, you just don't even know. Like, I have no idea. Sometimes I just give up. I'm just like, okay, I'm not even going to look at it. But you know, this is the value. It's gone down like 600 bucks. It's not looking that great. My Blackberry has been tanking as you can see. Yeah, that's the value. I'm down $1,559, which is around 8% negative now. So I lost all my profits that I got um, last year. And here we are. I'm negative thanks to blackberry thank you and also plexia i'm not working hard enough apparently so the graph was looking pretty good as you guys can see the profits were pretty consistent and then i started to do some stupid stuff which is started to buy blackberry and everything died i'm down just a bit not too bad but this could be a lot better enough with the depressed kind of Thing. let's go into each stock and what it's been doing and you know just my thoughts about it I guess that's what you're here for Blackberry is my biggest holdings as you guys know um, I'm pretty bullish on Blackberry for the next two to five years let's get this straight it's not a meme stock for me okay I've done my research I think Blackberry is undervalued heavily undervalued now I just think it's unfortunately labeled as a meme stock and there was a lot of things going on that shouldn't be going around I'm still pretty bullish on the company but in general it hasn't been doing too great since the last little pump here zoom in a bit so I started to buy just before it started pumping then I saw it go down I cried a bit and I a bit of dollar cost averaging going there some of these purchases were large and some of these purchases were very small like I still get referral money from sharesies when you guys use the code look in the link below also if you don't have a stake or a hatch account also look below I have a referral code for you guys that benefit both of us so it's a win-win go use it if you don't have an account either way I have been dollar cost averaging with the referral money and a bit of my own cash so I've been infusing a bit of cash into Blackberry but as you guys know it's not that great because I bought the majority I bought more than half of what I own right now at these prices around 18 to 24 so between those prices I bought a lot and then I bought like maybe 50% more at a lower price around here but still the average buy-in is around $17 maybe just below $17 so that's not that great comparing to the current market of $10.60 but yeah th that's what it is. So that's Blackberry. I am still very bullish about QNX, IV. All their product lines look pretty good. I think they're setting themselves pretty well but 
it does not mean it will start pumping right away. I think there will be some consolidation at these ranges and when it's ready to go up, it'll go up. But because this is not a blue chip company, it's a growth stock. The company has a new direction, which they don't sell phones anymore. Let's get this straight. They do not make phones they sold a bunch of patents to huawei and stuff like that they're like okay we're not going to make phones anymore that's not the core business core business is going to be cybersecurity, qnx iv and stuff like that so just keep your eyes open for those things for blackberry it's not a phone company anymore that's that um there's nothing much to talk about it except for the fact that i'm still on the bullish side for the medium to long term on this company so that's that I'll probably buy more Blackberry as time goes if I have cash lying around. If it's at these ranges around 10 to $15, I'm pretty happy to buy them up because I think it's gonna be worth way more later. That's my thoughts, okay? That's my opinions. I'm not telling you to buy the stock. Secondly, we got GameStop which I bought early February. So I bought in after it retracted a lot from the previous squeeze. What happened? It dipped a lot and it came back up yesterday. So the thing here, there's something I want to tell you guys. I bought GameStop to show you what it's like to ride on these meme stocks, but also, you know, to support the retail investors, stuff like that. I do like the whole cause and I'm trying to support it. So I bought a bit of GameStop, not a huge lot but it's okay, it's a decent amount of around 859 US dollars now. This is like one of the few that is up right now. It went up 20%. So this is the moral here. I bought it at 90 bucks. That's when I bought it. And it dipped to like 50 bucks. Like as soon as I bought it, boom, I lost 50% of my value. I was like, oh, okay, well, that's okay, I'll just sit on it. I just didn't look at the price. Like, I know that's gonna stress me out. I've been through this in crypto land. I know what it's like to see the price go down gradually over like a year or so. It's nothing to me anymore. So I just sat on it. Didn't really care about it. Then recently it started squeezing again. I don't really know what's happening. So apparently it's not retail investors that caused this little pump here. It seems like some big boys are buying it up and apparently it's got something to do with the option expiration and stuff like that. So there's a lot of things going on which I still need to read about, but I won't talk too much about that kind of stuff. It does require some kind of technical knowledge about you know investing in fundamentals and whatnot, option trading and stuff like that. There is a bit of uncertainty of what actually caused all this but apparently it wasn't just retail investors here so i'm holding it i have an exit plan unlike most people okay so current price is at 108 dollars. so i'm thinking to start selling from maybe 250 300 and from there i'm gonna see where it goes i'm probably not gonna keep it for too long i just wanted to show people what it's like to have these high risk stocks i think i showed people what you're you know putting yourself into when you're doing this you can see 50 percent drops then you can see a 2x the day after all of a sudden after three weeks you know this is the kind of things you gotta mentally endure and i might make it look very very easy okay i really do not care i just look at it and be like Okay, wow, it just dipped. When the price went from like 90 all the way down here in the 50s and 60s and even 40s, I seen people panicking, some of them sold, you know, things went crazy. That's the thing. It's not easy for everyone. It's not supposed to be easy to handle volatility. It's special types of people like me who can endure this. I'm joking. I really don't care. Crypto really makes me insensitive to these price volatility. It just happens every day in crypto. Crypto just dipped like 50% for me. Who really cares? I, I don't care. At the end, profit is a profit. I think that's like a nice saying. I'll keep GME until it hits around 300 bucks and I'll see where it goes from there. But maybe you guys will see what I do with it in my next live stream or something like that. Just ask me any questions from these videos in the live streams and I'll answer them for you right there. That's about it for GameStop. What else do we have? Plexure. So I know a lot of you guys know that I work at Plexure. Now I've been getting a lot of messages and people asking me why is Plexure dipping? I really don't know. 
Plexure isn't the only one going down at the moment. Pretty much everything is going down. Let's see how the NZ Top 50 is doing. See, the NZ Top 50 peaked around January, early January, and it's been going down ever since. This is what I kind of want to talk about is I've been talking about market greed is so high for such a long time now. If you guys been up to date with my videos for the past six months, I've been saying it consistently that the market is a bit too high for me. Therefore, I'm not going to go into blue chips, large market caps. That's really not my thing because the ones that suffer the most when the market dips are those guys because they are the main drivers of the market. When the NZ Top 50 is dipping, that means the NZ Top 50 companies are in average dipping. There are two types of investing that could do better than the market during these times. It is dividend investing and growth investing. Dividend is a lot easier. You just buy companies that has good cash flow, good amount of audience, very consistent track record and stuff like that. It's reasonably easy to find a good dividend stock. It's just that you won't be making that much money and you won't be seeing like crazy share price increases, but you're just in it for like the two to 5% dividend yield per year. And it could be higher than 5%, who knows? That's not really my cup of tea. As you guys know, I like a bit of risk I don't care what time of the year it is. I always love me some high risk stocks. So I decided to go more growth and that's what I did. This is my growth portfolio, right? So Plexure's one of it. I also work here, but at the same time, I think it's a pretty good growth uh, company and I think it's got a lot of potential for the medium to long term as well. I have the same thoughts of it as I have it with BlackBerry. I think it will go up in value in the next maybe two to five years. This is going to be a long term hold for me. It really doesn't matter. I think this is something I would own even if I do leave the company. If I see growth potential, I'll keep it. Some people were saying that I might be holding it just because I work here. That's not really the case because when you're buying the stock, you're looking for an increased share price. That's literally it you're trying to make money. Like just because you like it, if you know you're gonna lose money, why would you buy it? You guys probably seen this in my portfolio for quite some time now. So nothing much to talk about it in general. Uh, Virgin Galactic is the last stock I have in my portfolio. It's done pretty well for me. I sold around here and it's kind of went up further from there than it dipped quite a bit recently as well. But then again, this is a growth um, stock as well. We really don't know what we're going to do with it. But I think this is going to be like a short to not short, but medium term unless it goes up crazy amounts. So from a $100 um, valuation, I might be looking to profit take even more. So as you can see, I bought it around $25 average around there, $26 average. And at 46, I sold like half of it. That's literally how how you profit take it went up further I did nothing once you sell it you just got to forget about it that's literally it okay it doesn't matter if it keeps going up you took your profits and you're done with it that's the kind of mindset you need to thrive in these markets you can't get too greedy if you become too greedy then eventually you're not gonna make a profit because you're gonna lose all the opportunity to profit take this is a good example if you bought GME around 10 20 dollars and if you weren't selling it when it was hitting three four hundred you are actually stupid. I'm gonna probably get a lot of hate from these Wall Street bettors, but it is your money. You need a profit take when you think you need a profit take. You don't hold it just because everyone else is. It's not a good investment strategy and there's a lot of people on Wall Street bets saying I'm not in it for the money and stuff like that. I'm also not really in it to make a profit like that wasn't my expectation. I just wanted to show people what happens when I buy GME and also you know support the retail investors but at the end I don't want to lose money right okay and if I see an opportunity to sell it at such a high price if I bought it here I would have been setting up limit sales around two, three, four hundred dollars. That's what I would have done. I would have made a profit. Who is to blame me for all the, oh, you sold your GME stocks? It doesn't matter. Invest for yourself. It is your money. If you lose money because you didn't sell at the right time, it's no one else's fault. It's your fault. You can't put the blame on anyone else. So just do what you got to do. That's all I want to say here. So. That's about it today. I hope you enjoyed. If you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. Put a comment down below what you thought. Subscribe to the channel. 
watch the ads and stuff like that if you can if you have the time to please do it really does help the channel and i will catch you in the next live streams or something like that i might do some things where i talk about terminologies terminologies in the investing world is pretty important good to know what everything means but also things you might need to do before you invest i've been seeing people jumping into investing without being prepared to okay so those are things that i'm thinking of making videos about so look out for that as well and i will catch you in the next video until next time i'll catch you around see ya